먹으니까 진짜 건강이 안 좋아져. 진짜. 진짜 우리나라 어떻게 다 먹어? 안 먹자. 집에서도 다 먹어. 내가 요리하면 잘 먹어. 맛봐. 이상한 거. Last time we finished here, we discussed what are the advantages the China puts o f international investment. So we said we get more opportunities. We get more targeted investment overseas. And we're going to talk about investment also diversification a little bit. So, we're going to talk about the efficient frontier. Efficient frontier is the most efficient combination of all possible risky assets. So we have different types of risky assets we talked about before. We have uh, different companies, right? Then we have different industry, okay? Uh, we have different countries. So we have different types of uh, risk, risky assets. Okay? We can have Kia and Volkswagen are both in car companies, right? Yes. But Volkswagen has a crisis, Volkswagen gets a problem. We have the, in the car industry. There's a problem in the car industry. People stop buying cars because they're more, young people are more. Uh, conscious about the environment, so they stop buying big cars, just buy small cars. So the industry has a problem. Okay? Then the country, some uh, country can have some crisis. Okay? Just Korea has a crisis, then Kia has a problem. They're selling cars and more cars in Korea. Okay? So we want to uh, make, do you understand, efficient combination? Efficient combination means a good combination, so that we don't have we don't have too much risk. Okay, so clearly the riskiest one here is I just invest in one company, in one industry, in one country. Okay, I just invest in Volkswagen in the car industry in Germany. Okay, then Volkswagen has a problem, the car industry has a problem, and Germany has a problem. It's a high risk, so we don't want that to have that kind of problem. So the broader the diversification, the more stable the returns, and the more diffuse the risk. Do you understand diffuse? Diffuse, spread out. Risk is spread out. Okay. So uh, we want to get as wide diversification as we can. Okay. Are we going to make a big profit with the wide diversification? No, we make a smaller profit. Okay. It will be with Volkswagen. If we just invest in one product company, Volkswagen. Right, their stock price would go down by 50%. Okay, their stock price would go up by 50%. Okay, in the next year. But if we invest across all of them, some stocks go up, some stocks go down. So maybe it's just going to go up 10% or down 10%. Okay, so the risk is lower, but the return is also lower. Do you understand return? Yes. Effective return. So we, but which is which do people prefer usually? Yes, people would be a little bit biased towards this kind of one. Okay, uh, there may be some situation where you want to get the higher, take a higher risk, but uh, mainly we want to have more diversification. Okay, so we can uh, divide the return into systemic risk, which cannot be eliminated, and non-systemic risk. So this is non-systemic risk. This can be eliminated, okay? Do you understand eliminated? Yes. <coughs> you can eliminate by diversification, but systemic risk, systematic risk is something that affects all the world that we can't uh, go against, right? So if we have a global crisis, or let's say the US raise their interest rates and affects all the world economy, okay? That's kind of a uh, systemic risk, market risk, we can't eliminate. So, uh, here is a graph which shows the gains from international diversification. So, here we have number of stocks, okay, on the bottom line, and here we have risk. 
So if we have just one stock, our risk is 100%. Do you understand that? Yes. If that stock company goes bankrupt, we're going to lose all our money. Okay? Then as we go on to the more stocks, if we get to 10 stocks, our risk goes down to just usually around 30%. Okay? But the thing that we can notice here is that diversification has less benefit as we go on. Okay? It has diversification has a high benefit. For the first two, three, four, five, six, usually six is the key number. Okay? Until we get to six, diversification has a big benefit. But after six, the number six, diversification just has a small extra benefit. So that's telling us that we should invest in six different companies, in six different industries, in six different countries. We're going to get most of the benefit of diversification. Okay? Do we need to invest in every company in the world, in every industry in the world? No. No, right? Because that's statistics. Okay, this is from statistics. Do you like statistics? No. Do you study statistics? <laughs> yes, so according to the statistics, they make this kind of uh, calculation, okay? So we can see that six is the key number. After six, the benefit of diversification is not, not it's very small. But then we can see here, this is U.S. stocks and international stocks. So if we just invest in the U.S., our risk, we diversify the risk to 27%. But if we invest abroad, we diversify our risk to down to 11%. So a, a big difference there. Okay? So this is why people should diversify internationally. This, the difference between U.S. stocks and international stocks. <coughs> Okay, so the reason is that U.S. has a crisis, I, I can lose my money. But if I invest in international stocks, maybe Brazil or China or India don't have any crisis. So I don't have, I don't lose as much money. Okay, so we're going to talk about this and look at some stud case study of Nestle. Okay, so we can... Nations, we looked at, these days, one problem is the business cycles are getting closer together, okay, because of globalization. But still, we have some com countries which have different economic cycles. <coughs> so, even though in the country we have some problem, outside the country we might not have any problem in another country. So, if we look at the history, stock markets have wide differences in returns and risk. Okay, so some stock markets, very high return, very high risk, lose a lot of money. Other stock markets, not so big. So emerging markets have higher risk and return than developed markets. We looked at before the Shanghai stock market. Okay, we saw the Shanghai stock market went up and down a lot, right? If we look at the Brazil stock market, it's going to be similar, and India. But the developed market stock markets is more stable. Still volatile but more stable than the emerging markets. Okay? Cross market correlations have been low. What does it mean cross market correlation? What does that mean? Cross, here's the US and here's Brazil. Uh, right? So US, Brazil. So if we put the time here from 2000 to 2015 Right? US stock market looks like this, right? Goes up and down and up and down, right? Does the Brazilian stock market look the same? No, right? So it's low cross market correlation. Maybe the US stock market, they were going up around here, the Brazilian stock market went up a lot. Okay, more volatile. And then it went down a lot. And then the US market was coming back up, but no, the Brazilian market has stayed down, right? So we can see that. In this case, I would have made more money in Brazil, but in this case, more money in the US. Okay? So if I invest in both Brazil and the US, my profit is lower here. I could have just invested in Brazil and made a big profit, right? But here, the US is up and Brazil is down. So my profit is going to look like this, right? More stable. Do you understand? Yes. So, International diversification pushes out the efficient frontier. So uh, we can. Well, one problem with the cross market correlation is that 
when the volatility is the greatest or when there's a global crisis, markets seem to be more correlated. Okay? So we can see that there was a crisis. Brazil goes down, the US goes down, right? So that's a problem for global investors. That the time when the markets are most correlated is when there is some crisis. Do you understand? So we want the reason we're investing in different markets is to avoid the risk of losing our money. But well, the problem is when there's a crisis, most of the markets are correlate, correlated. So efficient market, not as good as this one. So we should have some mixture of developed markets and emerging markets. Okay, but we already saw that the emerging market stock market is 80% of the world's capital, right? Money invested in the in developed, developed market. Just 20% or so on in this emerging economy. So we can do the same when we invest money. Okay? We can invest 70 or 80% in developed markets, 30% in the emerging economies. But we can find a fund which invests in developed market and also emerging economies. Emerging economies is going to have a higher risk, but also a higher return. Okay? Developed markets tend to be more correlated. Germany, US, Japan tend to move together more. Emerging markets are less correlated. Okay? So, because they're less correlated, it can give advantage. But as the capital money can move more easily, the correlations might increase in the future. We saw this year the Chinese stock market was going down this year, and also the US stock market, European stock market started to go down because of, affected by China. Uh, so, there are some barriers to us to buy stocks in different countries. First one is the segmented market. So the stock markets is all se separate. We have to go to the different stock markets. Uh, lack of liquidity. So some stock markets, it's not very liquid. Stocks are not sold much. Exchange rate control. So countries like China, they, they have some limit of the money, Chinese RMB, you can buy in one year. Underdeveloped capital markets, so uh, for example I said in Korea, I'm not happy with the supermarket of funds in Korea, it's not very well developed, do you understand? Compared to London or New York, there are a lot of funds, you understand funds or ETF that I can buy, but in Korea I only have two or three choices of funds that I can invest in, okay? Like global fund, like that kind of thing. So. Maybe I'm not going to invest in other countries because not much capital market in Korea is not as that well developed. They're not offering me such good option for funds. Okay, so I suggest business opportunity for somebody in Korea to make a better ETF and fund market. We saw some company like Tiger just started two years ago. Okay, exchange rate risk. I have to worry about the exchange rate. And the lack of information. I don't know about stocks in Argentina. I don't know about stocks in Africa or China. Okay? I have to. I, I don't know about the data. So other ways of diversifying. We can trade in the ADRs. We can, if an American, buy the ADRs. Trade in American shares like uh, Warren Buffet. S&P 500 is very globalized. Uh, a lot of companies are globalized. Okay? They do business all over the world. And trade in the internationally diversified mutual funds. Mutual fund or ETF. Global fund, international fund, or you can choose the country, right? I'm going to invest in an ETF in Germany and an ETF in China to mix developed and emerging economies. Okay? So we looked at already on down beyond some types of funds that we could invest in. We said the ETF usually has a low fee okay, and well diversified. So, uh, <coughs> when we calculate, do you have any question about diversification, the benefit of diversification? We talked about. Well, we, we choose the country diversification. How many countries, the developed country and developing country, and 
in Muslim countries? OECD countries, there's about 29, right? So I guess there's about that number of developed countries, roughly. Emerging economies is going to be about 110. And then we call them transitional economies. Transitional economies like in Af maybe in Africa, Somalia, or the Congo, they're not classified. Used to be called third world, right? But these days, traditional economies is better than third world countries. Okay? Uh, do you understand transition? They're transitioning from agricultural, agricultural economy to manufacturing. Emerging economies, they have a lot of manufacturing and raw material, but up changing to services. Developed country mainly, service industry and high income. Okay? So, uh, we, as you know, as you know, most of the stock money invested in stock markets is in developed countries, stock market and companies. Of course, the companies from the developed countries do business in emerging economies too, and transitional economies, right? If we think of Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola is a US company. If I invest in Coca-Cola, I'm going to be investing in the New York stock market, right? In the US, okay? But Coca-Cola does business in Somalia, in the Congo, in every country in the world, okay? So that's why we can make our portfolio more in developed markets. Okay, and less in emerging economy companies, but also we can invest in emerging market companies. There are also some strong companies, right? Let's say Alibaba. Actually, Alibaba has listed in the U.S. They are also selling stock in the U.S. So if you just invested in the U.S., you could also invest in Alibaba, right? But there are other emerging market companies we can invest in you know, on their own stock market. So. Uh, you have to decide, right? You can find a fund for all emerging markets, right? ETF for all emerging markets. You can find an ETF for developed countries. You can find an ETF for global countries. You can find an ETF for individual countries. So you can decide. But you don't need to invest in more than, than six diversified. Six seems to be the statistical one, right? So if you choose the single country ETF, you can just choose how many countries? How many countries do you need to choose if you choose just single country ETF? Six. Six, right? Do you need to choose every country in the world? No. No, right? You'll get a little bit more benefit, but it's not worth your while. If we look at this graph, the diversification benefit after six goes down a lot, right? So what six countries would you choose? US. Yes. Yes. Germany. Germany, yes. China. China. So you're just choosing one emerging economy, just China, and five developed economies. So about 12% emerging economy and 88% developed economy. That's okay. <laughs> if you want. Otherwise, you can stick in one more emerging economy. Kick out one developed economy and put in one emerging economy. Brazil. Brazil, who are you going to kick out? Seven, you like you can take seven, that's okay, right? <laughs> no rule. Okay? So you can go now on Dam Cafe, try to find the ETF and invest Manwan in each country. Each ETF, right? So if you want more risk, you can put in more emerging economies. If you want less risk, you can put in more. Developed economies, right? But I would say what's easier for you is just buy developed, buy the global fund, just one fund, or just buy the developed country fund and emerging economy fund, okay? ETF. Then that's you can decide how much you'll invest in the developed country fund and how much you'll invest in the emerging economy fund, okay? So if you only invest in developed countries, you can have a bigger loss. For example, in the financial crisis. Developed countries went down more, and emerging economies didn't go down as much. Okay, so you should invest in emerging economies too. Okay, but just you can decide. It's no rule. So if we, <coughs> we're going to calculate our uh, portfolio return, so we have 
RP is the portfolio expected return. A or US, expected US market return. Or world equals expected global return. So I can invest in the US, okay? And I can invest in the rest of the world. So this is how we calculate. Let's say I have 50% US, 50% times my US return, plus 1 minus 50, 50% 50 times the rest of the world expected return. Okay, so you have to try this uh, sample problem. So uh, maybe I should give you the answer. Let's put it in white. So, so the problem is, what is the expected return if uh, a portfolio with 30%, 35% invested in Japan, <coughs> returning 10%, and 65% in the US, returning 5%. So I'll solve this uh, problem. This is the equation. Okay. So you, you made your investments and you decided to invest 35% uh, in Japan and you think you're going to get a 10% return in Japan. Okay, and you decided to invest 65% in the US, and you think you're going to get 5% return in the US. What's going to be your total return? going to be the percentage of the US or is the return in the US. <laughs> Remember that 10% is 0 0.1. Yes, what's the answer? 3.3. 3.3, is that correct? Is that correct? No? What's the answer then? 0.7. So let's correct it. So 65% in the US. 0.65 multiplied by 5% return, 0.05. Okay? Why did you say, ah, did you put here 0.5? 50% return in the US? I calculate the 1 minus A. 49%. We're looking at percentage, right? Percentage. Then 0.35. 1 minus 0 0.65 by 0 0.1. Okay, and we get this plus this, which is 0 0.0675, which is 6.75%. So if I invest that much in the US and that much in Japan, so it's just a way of calculating. It's like weighted average. We studied by weighted average before, right? Same as a weighted average equation. 
So this is a calculation of the expected portfolio risk. Okay. So uh, this is a little bit more complicated, but this equation explains the benefit of diversification. Okay. So uh, let's. I think if we look at the example, it will help us. But uh, P is the cross-market correlation. How correlated are the markets? P. Okay. Uh, this is the U.S. returns variance. Do you understand variance? What does variance mean? Variance means does does the returns change much in the U.S. Right. And this is the world returns variance, or another country returns variance. Okay. Then we already looked at A. A is the uh, percent of the portfolio. Okay, so we look, we're using this time the variance and the co correlation between the two markets. This will tell us our risk. So let's look at the same example. What is the risk of a portfolio with 35% invested in Japan with a standard deviation of 6% and a standard deviation of 8% uh, in the US and a correlation coefficient of 0 0.7. So let's try this example. You understand standard deviation? Yes. So which, which market is more risky, the US or Japan, if we look at the standard deviation? US. How do you say standard deviation in Korean? What does that mean? What does standard deviation mean? It's the standard is the one answer, and deviation is the is variable the answer. Yes. Yeah, so we have a lot a lot of numbers, right? And then the average. Okay, the average is, is uh, here is five is five, right? Yes. And then how far away from five are the numbers moving? Right. We could have here ten, ten, ten. 0, 5, 10, 0, 0, right? Maybe there's one too many times there. But, right? In this case, the standard deviation is high. The average is 5, but the numbers are far away from the average. Okay? We could have another case. 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, 5, right? Is, which one has the higher standard deviation, this one or this one? First one. First one, right? This one's standard deviation. No standard deviation. This 5 is the average, right? Standard deviation, how far away from the average are we moving? So if we think of this as stock price, and this is stock price, which stock market is more risky? A or B, which stock market is more risky? A. Right, this is stock price year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, okay? So standard deviation is one way of showing how much does the stock market change. Do you understand? So the US has a higher standard deviation, it's a little bit more risky than Japan, okay? And then here we have the correlation coefficient. Correlation coefficient means, well, it wouldn't look like that here, but let's say we have 6, 7, 6, 7, right? No, 6, 1. Then we have here 7, 2, 2. Right? That looks a little bit correlated. This one is high, this, it's high. This one is low, it's low. Do you understand? So it's correlated. Okay? When you're investing, do you want to invest in two markets with the high correlation or low correlation? You want a low correlation, right? If you put here a lower number, correlation is no lower, is this number going to be higher or lower if you put a lower number here? Lower. Is my risk going to be higher or lower? Lower. Lower, right? So the less correlation there is between the two markets, the less risk we're going to have. Okay? So this equation, because this correlation is included in the equation, is one reason to show uh, that the diversification benefit, right? The less correlation the stock market is, okay, the more the less risk I have. The more correlated this is, very correlated. Not much benefit of diversification. Okay? 
So in this case, the correlation is 0 0.7. It's not 1, but 0 0.7. So make the calculation and tell me the risk of this portfolio. Okay. So A is going to be A is going to be 0.35 for Japan and 0.65 for the US. The same as the last one. Right? 35% in Japan, 65% in the US. This is the standard deviation of the US here. And this is standard deviation of Japan. Okay? So make the calculation. You'll need to use the squared and square root function on your on your calculator. So write out, write out the numbers. Write, you need to write out the numbers. What's the first number? 0 0.65. 0 0.65 squared multiplied by 0 0.8, 0 80%. 0 0.08. 0 0.08 squared. Okay. So make the calculation. Okay. 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 Okay.